SignalR can be used to update your connected clients in real time. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to look at adding Signal R to what we built in episode 123. But before we do that, we have a comment to reply to or a question. Yeah, so we had Fanry Media, I assume that is the person's real name, mm -hmm. um, asked how, so we were talking about background services, or you might hear that referred to as hosted services in ASP.NET Core. And the question was, how does this compare or how is it related to Azure Web Jobs? It's a very good question. Um, off the top of my head, I would say uh, the biggest difference is that uh, Azure Web Jobs would be very specific to hosting within Azure App Service, uh, whereas this is a more, I guess, generic thing where it's just any ASP.NET Core app can have a hosted service in it. So it doesn't matter where you happen to be hosting this app. You could be doing it in a Windows service on a Windows machine, or you could be doing it in Azure. Um, and then kind of alongside with that, the, the other big difference is that this is actually happening in process inside your ASP.NET Core app, or as web jobs. Um, so a web job is a, a process that will run in your Azure app service. It will happen in the same instance of that app service. It's on the same physical machine. Uh, where that app service is running, but it's not in the same process as your web server is is the the web host is running. Can you think of anything else that I missed there, guys? No, I think that's probably most of it. Cool. Well, thanks for the question. And yeah, what we're going to do today is uh, kind of take the next step in that example that we looked at in episode one twenty three, where we built the We'll just quickly review that. We built a background service here that uh, runs in the background, and it's just a loop that listens for messages coming in on a UDP port. And when we get that message, we, we dump it in a memory cache. And then anytime somebody visits the, the home page here, we pull that message out of the memory cache and display it on the in an H1 element on the on the page. But what we'd like to, that requires the clients to re actually refresh the page to see if the message has changed. And what we would like to do is update that in real time so that as the messages come in, we can just send a message out to anybody who happens to be connected to, to our app and, and update that uh, section right away. So let's start by pulling in, we're going to use SignalR for this, and let's start by pulling in the server side piece. So, first thing we need to do is a uh, couple of things under services here. We're going to need to do services dot add signal R. And um, the next piece is to uh, under endpoints here. So uh, where we map our different endpoints for the application, we're going to say endpoints dot map signal R. I got that wrong. No, I think that maybe now is a good time to mention that a pirate's favorite way of communicating is to use signal R. Oh I think he just said that. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible, but that's what we've come to expect. <laughs> If you're new to SignalR, the hubs, uh, so what uh, Dave's mapping right now, hubs are like this really cool, it, it's like your server side API that you're you're going to build out, and the framework actually creates a client side library. This lets you basically execute C sharp code on the server um, by signaling, you know, you, I guess signal R using like sending signals from the front end. So you're writing JavaScript in the front end and invoking C sharp actions in the back end. So uh, and vice versa, um, the C sharp code in the back end can signal out to the JavaScript client and um, update properties in your application on the front end. Yeah, so in this case, what we're doing is creating a hub that's going to allow us to send those messages out to the client. So that's just a class that inherits from hub, which should be from ASP.NET Core SignalR. It is going to implement hub of type I important message client. Which is just an interface that will define the messages that are going to get sent out to our client. 
So here we're going to have, it's a task. We'll call it message updated. And it's just going to contain the message is going to, or the, the method that we call send to the client is going to contain just the message. It's a simple string in this case. So that's our hub. And what we can do now is actually inject this hub into that background service that we had defined. So that's going to look like private read only, my hub context, the hub type, which was important message hub, and the interface for that client type. We'll just call it hub context. And we'll pass that in through constructor injection. And now over in our code, so that where we were previously just setting the, the message in the memory cache, we can call to our hub here. So we can say hub context dot clients dot all dot message updated and pass in the message. So that will send a message out to all our clients, connected clients saying, here's your new message. So that's it for the server side. Uh, we've added SignalR when we configured our services. We've mapped our hub to an endpoint called slash hub. And we called we call into that hub when we're when we get an updated message in our background service. So we use now the, we, sorry, I was just gonna say, we use the interface to define, to expose the methods that'll be generated or a callable client side. And yeah. then we, we use that as part of the configuration for the dependency injection so that we actually get the ability to call out uh, to any of those interface defined methods. Yeah. And, and execute code on the, on the client, cool. And you can do that without that client interface side interface, the I important message client. Uh, you could just use a string as the message as the method name and and signal it out that way. Uh, but it's kind of nice to have that all strongly typed on the server side here. And this so lets like you use that. write some makes it a little bit more testable too to ensure you're like yeah. using mock mock this out. Yeah. So now we need to go and do the server side piece or the client side piece. So our, our client side, the part that runs in the browser needs to know how to connect to the signal R stuff that we added. So one thing we need to do is pull down the, the JavaScript library for SignalR. And we do that using ASP.NET Core. So I'm using the libman uh, package manager, client-side library manager here in ASP.NET Core, or in Visual Studio. And it is ASP.NET slash SignalR. And I happen to be using uh, ASP.NET Core 3 here, which is currently in preview, so I need to specify that I want the at next version. I think I saw something somewhere suggesting that they were going to drop the ASP.NET moniker from SignalR. That's the point. I remember hearing that too. I don't know that it's happened yet. Interesting that this isn't finding the results. There it is. And this shows us all of the like source of the library, but the, we really only need one thing here from the dist slash browser folder. We'll just pull in the minified version. This dialog box is glitching out on me. Okay. So we've pulled that in now. Ooh. Hmm. That's weird. Autocomplete is not your friend right now. It, it really isn't. Okay. Is it script or scripts, guys? Scripts. Wrong again. Okay, so we're going to reference that script that we just pulled in. So, source equals lib. ASP.NET, signal R, dist, 
bit of a long path, browser, mm -hmm. signal our main. Uh, and then I'm just going to inline. Oh, it's not like that. Hey? It's a good reason to drop the at ASP.NET right there. <laughs> okay, so script. I'm just going to inline this part, but it would be wise to extract this into a separate JavaScript file in reality. Uh, now we need to go and we have the SignalR code available here because we've pulled it in from the, that library. We need to actually go and create a connection to our server that um, will allow us to have those messages come through. And the way we do that in this particular version of SignalR is we call it hub. But we create a new connection. So we save our connection equals uh, new signal R hub connection builder with URL slash hub. So that's what we had configured here, slash hub. And we build that connection. Next thing we need to do is tell it what to do when it receives a message. So we're going to say connection dot on message updated, I believe is what I called it. Which gets uh, camel cased as it gets converted. Actually, maybe it doesn't. Um, we'll test it um, in production. Yep. Yeah. It's the only way to know for sure. It's the best place to test things. Okay, so this is. where we're going to update the DOM. And we'll come back to that. And then the next thing we need, need to do is just start the connection. So connection.start. I'm ignoring any error handling on what we do if that fails, but we'll just start up the connection. We need an ID here so that we can reference this easily. I should be able to just set it like that. Yep, I think so. Yep. So I think that's everything we need. Let's debug this and see if I got the got that JavaScript right. You know, you can save several keystrokes um, if you pull in the entire jQuery library and <laughs> just do a use CSS style selectors. Okay, we don't have a message yet because we haven't sent any anything over there. Uh, I'll bring up a terminal so that we can do that. So the terminal is going to pump some data into that out of that UDP. Yeah, I'm going to send messages to that port using net magic. Cat. Oh, so I open the right uh, type of command prompt. I was hoping you were going to use magic. It is magic. It's it's the Windows subsystem for Linux, so that totally is magic, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Localhost port 9000. Oh my gosh, it worked on the first try. Oh, that is beautiful. But it was hidden while you did that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at the speed of that. Do you know what would be interesting, though? I think it would prove it's really working is if you open another shell and started. Oh, no, that, that might not work. I might just be talking about my butt. But I was, or, yeah, open up another window and just show opening in multiple windows. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, you know what would be even more fun? Three windows. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking if you typed in your background there, uh, an injection attack, I think if you typed a script attack, it would probably render that. Oh, probably. Oh, oh Donald oh. encoded it for us. 
<laughs> Drat. <laughs> nice. Love it. Darn those sneaky security people uh, protecting us when we didn't even mean to. I'm disappointed about that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never read that. <laughs> no. Okay, Twitter, go make it happen. <laughs> uh, right on. Okay, so uh, on the client side then, that's with URL hub. Um, so we don't need to include any other script. This is just going to pull that down via the uh, hub connection builder. So whatever whatever's in the signal R magic, that's going to allow us to pull down what we need to in order to establish that connection when you call start. So mm -hmm. um, is it possible to look at... Uh, I know like in earlier versions of SignalR, we could look at that source that was pulled across just to see what it actually, um, because it's it was fairly readable before. How how well does that translate now? Uh, it doesn't generate any any specific client-side code uh, for us. Okay. That's what you're referring to? So yeah. So this is just the SignalR library. All the messages sure. that come across are just text-based things, so that it's not like a... So they've internalized a, everything then? There isn't a... A, like specific client JavaScript thing that gets generated for us for for our hub. It, everything we do is just kind of string based on the on the client side. Very it's cool. Little, I think that part's a little bit different than than it was in uh, the original version of SignalR. Mm -hmm. They, I believe, in version three here, or along with ASP.NET Core three, one of the things that they're adding is. Um, connection resilience here with the, the connection. So if it drops, it will try to reconnect, or you can configure it to try to reconnect. And that wasn't built in with the ASP.NET Core signal R, like the first version of, of that. So the one that shipped with two dot whatever. So that's being added back, which is handy. Do you know if it still does the full pack to various like long calling? It does, yeah. Like okay. I forget what the order is for the fallback. There's Web sockets is the preferred method, and then it falls back to something else, and then long polling. Yeah, and there's a forever frame in there too, or something. Yeah. But yeah that's and at one point, somebody had built a um, uh, a fallback mechanism for an endless loading GIF. <laughs> <laughs> that's handy. Uh, that's all I okay. had for this episode. Well, it's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us, Dave. Uh, so everybody should remember to like, comment, share, and uh, well, well, we're re we're recording this on National Cheesecake Day, so you should go and have some cheesecake, even though we're publishing it long after National Cheesecake Day is done. There's no bad thing I mean, for cheesecake. Yeah, exactly. A slice of cheesecake a day keeps the doctor away. I'm pretty sure that's how that goes. Uh, I mean, Works for me. Keep the keep the doctor away by benefit of you being so fat the doctor can't get close to you. It's like an arm's reach thing. It's like yeah. <laughs> doctor can't get here. <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for joining us and I'll do all the things that Simon said and subscribe. It'll be wonderful. <laughs>